Hey there, and welcome back to another Dragon Prince video. And honestly, it's been a while since I made one of these videos, with the most recent one talking about the character of Rayla and what her storyline could entail in the future. So I was thinking about some of the other heroes the other day, trying to think about what the future storylines of characters like Ezrin or Callum could be. When I started thinking about how unique their characters are in the context of the show, they're two half-brothers that somehow both have these crazy and special mystical powers. Ezrin has the uncanny ability to communicate and bond with various different animals, and is even able to forge a telepathic link between himself and the Dragon Prince Zim. And as far as magical powers go for the show, this is probably the most unique ability we've seen thus far. And then we have his older brother Callum, who's the only known human able to perform primal, non-dark magic without a primal stone. Basically, he's setting himself up to be the most powerful human wizard ever. But why do they have these abilities? As far as I'm aware, it hasn't really been explored in all that much depth. They kind of just have these powers, or acquire these powers, throughout the course of the story. So today I wanted to talk through what these powers mean to the story, and what they mean to the backstory of our two princely heroes. And the most boring answer, of course, and honestly one of the most likely answers, sadly, is that these kids have the powers for the sake of the plot, and they'll never really be explored in too much depth, or explained in great detail. And wouldn't that just be so completely and utterly unsatisfying? On one hand, we have a boy who can basically speak to animals, or at least communicate on a level that nobody else can. And then on the other hand, we have this young man who's managed to use magical abilities that no other human in recorded history has been able to use, simply through the power of love. And despite these abilities being quite unlike any other human character's traits that we see in the show, there remains a high likelihood that in the end, the abilities are going to get brushed over and forgotten about. That in the end, the reasoning behind these traits won't even matter at all. And that kind of sucks. Now, I'm not saying there needs to be some super advanced, convoluted backstory to explain things as such, but I'd hope they'd go into it into a little bit more detail than just, oh yeah, well now they have magical powers. Deal with it. I mean, nobody wants that. Even if it's just a tiny little explanation, it would be worth it. Because they're essentially two little chosen one heroes. It would be like never explaining why Voldemort wanted to kill Harry Potter as a baby, and instead just glossing over it completely. It just feels like unfinished business and unfinished story. So yeah, whilst it's possible that this innate magical ability is just never explained or addressed in any great detail, I think we can all agree it feels a little bit like a cop-out, and I'd prefer that we actually get a more well-rounded explanation. And of course, this brings us to the other side of the coin, trying to piece together an actual explanation as to what the source of their power is. Now, of course, there's the tried and true method of, they are prophesized heroes or something along those lines that the writers could pull out of their ass to try and justify everything. But just like having it never be explained, this kind of writing is highly unsatisfying and is kind of bullshit. It pretty much just feels like a cop-out sort of explanation for when you couldn't think of anything intriguing or clever at all. Oh, why did this happen? Why is this thing like this? Uh, prophecy, I guess. Seems kind of stupid. So prophecies aside, in the end, this really only leaves one possible reason. Lineage. It has to be some sort of special inherited power. Surely. Their abilities are way too unique and special to just pull out of your ass. There has to be a reason behind them. And honestly, being descended from somebody or something special, whilst being extremely cliche, would probably work a lot better than the other alternatives. But then this poses the question, who are they descended from? And how? And I have a bunch of ideas floating around, and we'll start off with the how. If it's a question of descent, I think we can all agree that it has something to do with Queen Sarai's family. After all, she's the common denominator. She's their mother, whilst they both have different birth fathers, so realistically any sort of magical potential is going to come from her. And on top of that, take a look at all the members of this family. There's Callum, the magic wizard, Ezrin, the animal whisperer, and these two sisters who are super crazy powerful warriors. And on top of that, the aunt survived that purity spell thing that the Sun Elves used. Something tells me that not many humans are supposed to do so well with that bit of magic. So, now we have the how are they descended, but we need the who as well. And in my view, there are two broad options. Pure human descent, or human and elf descent. If it's a purely human thing, then I think the family pretty much has to be descended from that original dark wizard guy that was taught by Erevos and took on that other dragon king. I mean, for all we know, he was able to use that kind of magic as well. I mean, yes, he used dark magic, but we also don't know that much about him. Maybe dark magic was just more useful to him for helping out his people. I mean, it does seem to have a lot more utility than regular magic from what I've seen so far. And for all we know, having been directly taught by Erevos, 
He may have learned how to harness magic in a way that no other human had before, or since. And in a magical universe, these kind of powerful secrets often get passed down via bloodlines and whatnot. And I mean, this actually does have a bit of potential in my opinion. But secret magical potential being passed down via human blood? I'm not convinced. The show takes great pains to show that humans are kind of lesser in terms of magic, so I'm not sure that passing down magical power through generations makes much sense from a purely human standpoint. And this brings us to the second school of thought. They have some elf DNA floating around in their body. And this seems to me the most plausible reason. Elves are much more in touch with magical arts than humans are in this universe. So those with elven descent could feasibly have traces of this left over in various different ways. But once again, for this kind of magic blood to leave such a trace generations later, it probably needs to be quite strong. And this really leaves it quite open, as we don't really know all that much about different various elven wizards, except Erevos. But it would seem a bit Darth Vader of him to suddenly be their ancestor though, right? Like he would have to be their great, 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 insert more greats here granddad, if that was the case. Although, I do think it would be a crazy twist which would enhance the story quite a bit. That being said though, if they do go the elven descent path, I think it would be more likely they're descended from some sort of elf that fought against Erevos and is now all crippled, and serves as a Yoda type mentor figure for them. Or got put in a coffin by our favourite purple elf, and has been pushing up daisies for the past 500 years or so. And honestly, I think this would be the smart way for the story to go. Have them be descended from a powerful and yet honourable elf who, if she or he is alive, can mentor Callum and then get iced by Erevos to increase the drama and emotional stakes. Or just have them stumble upon their ancestors' old spell books or journals or workshop or something like that. I feel like this would be a really interesting pathway for the brother's story, especially Callum's, to take. But in the end, this might just seem like the insane rantings and ravings of a tinfoil hat wearing theorist with too much time on his hands. But honestly, I do think my ideas here do have some merit, and they would serve to enhance the story going forward by giving an explanation as to the brother's abilities, whilst also giving them room to grow. But that being said, those are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of the theory? What's the source of their power in your opinion? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know.